couple of stories that have come together that our, our next guest is well qualified to talk and comment on. The first thing that caught my eye this week is our population growth statistics. The country's annual population growth um, is slowing as more and more people leave the country. Our population is uh, 5.12 million. Gosh, I can remember as a kid it was 3 million. Big deal. Um, fresh data from Stats New Zealand shows the national population increased just 0.2% for the year ended in June. That is the lowest growth rate since the 1980s. 40 years. 40 years. It compared to growth of 0.4% in the same period for 2021 and 2.2% growth in 2020. So something is happening here. We ain't growing our population. Of the country's 16 uh, regions, 12 experienced lower population growth in the 12 months to June than in 2021. Um, and there was a net migration loss of 11,500 with uh, the lowest natural increase in population, and I presume that's from people having babies, 24,100, since World War II. Lowest population growth since World War II. So we were not in uh, times of COVID lockdown at home bonking each other by the looks of it. Or if we do, we, we were using contraception. So that is an issue. And I looked at that story and then, man, in a context where we're short of workers, that is an issue let alone migration statistics. And then, of course, we have the passage yesterday, which the unions and the left are crowing over, so you know it's a bad thing, the passage yesterday of the Fair Pay Bill into being the Fair Pay Act, which essentially, to my understanding, allows for national awards and for people to lose autonomy in terms of their negotiations with, we, with each other, um, that's uh, employers and employees over wages and conditions. Essentially, it gives unions new powers to collectively bargain or impose working conditions and pay rates across industries without the individuals in con uh, concerned having much say. So all that together, I think, those two things together look a bit grim for businesses in New Zealand. One of the leading lobby, uh, leading lobby groups for businesses in New Zealand is Business New Zealand and its Chief Executive Kirk Hope joins us uh, now. Kirk, welcome to the platform, nice to have you with us. Morning Sean, thanks for having me. Alright, which concerns you most? The Fair Pay Act as it now is or the fact that we're just running out of people? Well, I think uh, when we survey uh, businesses around the country, both of those things are pretty concerning to them. Firstly, that they don't have enough workers at the moment. Um, and obviously these uh, population growth statistics alongside negative net mi migration are pretty concerning. Um, we know there's demand for the goods and services that New Zealand produces, but um, but unfortunately, you know, we're not going to be able to meet that demand because of uh, not having enough skills in the country. Um, fair pay agreements. Uh, why, in a time of crisis, uh, as 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 countries and businesses come out of COVID, would you decide to create this exceptionally rigid program of industrial relations uh, when almost every other country is moving in the exact opposite direction? Um, employers will have very little control, uh, as will employees, over you know the negotiations that take place. They'll be They'll be uh, like they probably were back in the days of awards done, and um, they'll now be smokeless rooms um, somewhere in somewhere in Wellington, which uh, I think would be pretty frustrating. Yeah, they'll for a lot be of done in smoke-free safe spaces, Kirk. <laughs> well, uh, yes, quite. All right. Look, that is all concerning, um, and I wonder if we could just take the one step at a time, this drop in population, which is really quite marked when you look at those, those figures, um, can that be turned around by yet more work? And the government does reluctantly seem to be prepared to tinker with this and recognise that it's rather doctrinaire starting position of more foreign workers suppresses wages here. I think they've abandoned that idea. But do we still need more urgent and more substantive action on immigration settings to allow more workers, which we desperately need, into the country? 
the short answer to that is, is most definitely, I think. But what we don't really need is more tinkering. What we need is very, very clear, simple rules uh, that are easy to understand and enable people uh, to enable and assist people to make decisions about, you know, when they're, frankly, they're packing up their gear from off on the other side of the world to come to a far-flung country like New Zealand. Many people would, would have you say, would, would have you believe that, you know, we're, we're an extremely attractive country. Now, New Zealanders know that to be the case. Um, we have, unfortunately, however, had, you know, uh, had our borders shut for a very long time. That sent, that sent some signals to international markets that, that are, that are quite negative. You know, people don't want to be trapped in a country uh, and they don't know that that's probably unlikely. But if you're making a decision from the other side of the world, you want to mitigate as many of your risks as possible. So we need to simplify our immigration settings and be consistent over a long period of time. You know, successive governments of the left and the right have tinkered and that's been problematic, I think. Do you think a labour market with the fair pay agreement in it as law is more or less attractive to a potential immigrant worker? Well, I think the, the key thing there is they'll be looking at comparative uh, sort of standards and, and looking at what pay they might likely get in New Zealand um, if they're going to shift here and the living costs, of course. Um, is fair pay, agreement, uh, fair pay, pay agreements going to uh, help or hinder that? M- my view is they're probably going to hinder it. Um, if you're an employee saying, actually, I don't want to be involved in one of those, I'm going to avoid it by going elsewhere, um, then that's a loss for New Zealand. Yeah. Any other ideas on how we can get our population growing again, Kirk? And does Business New Zealand in general think that would be a good thing? Yeah, we're actually doing some work on this at the moment around sort of what a... Uh, what population plan might look like. Uh, I, th- I think one of the challenges is that governments have said, you know, we'll be as big as we want to be. Um, but that that hasn't allowed things like um, long-term planning for infrastructure. And we know people, you, you only have to walk around New Zealand to see that there is an infrastructure deficit or try and drive around New Zealand and see there's an infrastructure deficit. So we've been doing some work about, you know, what that long-term plan could look like. And, and as I said, You'd need to create um, settings which are simple, uh, easy to engage with, uh, are attractive to people. Uh, you know, in terms of the, the the current labor market, one of the things you could do is stop work testing partners to enable you know people to bring their families here. That would yeah. be a, a really, Huge. really simple step. Yeah. Um, Kirk, uh, commitments, I think, from National and Act to repeal uh, the Fair Wage Act if they, they take over the Treasury benches after the next election. Do you trust them to do that and do you think it should be a high priority? Uh, yeah, well, look, if, if, they, if they are able to form a government, uh, you know, they've made a commitment to do that. I think it would be a good thing. Uh, I think it would make us comparably more attractive. Um, I think they would. you would want to do a couple of other things as well. Uh, I think you'd probably need to um, make the foreign investment rules simpler um, to enable capital to come back into New Zealand because they've been immensely tightened up over the last five years as well. Um, so you want those things to work in concert, I think. Yeah. Hey, thank you very much indeed for your time uh, this morning. Uh, that is Kirk Hope, Chief Executive of Business in New Zealand. So a two-pronged problem there. We're simply not growing our population the way we used to and people aren't coming here the way they used to. And now we have, and all I'm asking you, here's the simple logic. If there is a new piece of legislation which has unions, old-fashioned unions, at Parliament, clapping and slapping each other on the back, you reckon that's good for business? I just think you instinctively know it's not. It's a return to the bad old days of central wage bargaining and sort of Soviet type constructs. And the other thing I guess with this lack of population is when does the team of five million suddenly become the team of four and a half million and then four million? Are we going backwards?